everyone and welcome to Tabor Talk. So I feel compelled to do this one video. It's so exasperating when you see on social media, there are actually even polls that, that people feel that Trump is doing a good job handling this coronavirus. It's so absurd. I don't even know what else to say. Let me make a statement. Trump could not have handled it any worse. It's horrible. All right, so what I'm going to do, I was going to download a clip. There's a young man here, Brian Tyler Cohen. I don't know if people are familiar with him. He's got a great show. Um, I was going to download this and then uh, stream it here, but instead I'll just, I'm just going to play, I'm just going to hold up my phone, play a couple of clips, and then I'll comment, okay? Now this will put this to rest. Trump has handled this in an abominable fashion, all right? So here we go. And listen, listen, there's a reporter from CBS who asked him a question. Okay, now watch this. Sorry for the lighting. I just have um, well, this little lamp over here. Okay, uh, let me just continue. Ready? Here we go. You were angry because information about the virus should have been told This is Fox earlier, News, by the way. And a lot sooner. People knew it was happening, and people did not want to talk about it. Many Americans are saying the exact same thing about you, that you should have warned them the virus was spreading like wildfire through the month of February instead of holding rallies with thousands of people. Yep. Why did you wait so long who you to warn them? Who you and why did you yeah. uh, not have social distancing until March 16th? Answer the question, douchebag. Nietzsche Jang with CBS News. So, Never mind where she's from. What I did in terms of cutting off or banning China from coming in. Chinese nationals. But by the way, not Americans who are also nice coming from China. Nice and easy. Just relax. We cut it off. People were amazed. These gentlemen, everybody was amazed that I did it. We had 21 people in a room. Everybody was against it but me. Dr. Fauci said, had I not done that, perhaps tens of thousands and maybe oh much more God. than it's that. Oh, my God. It's all just a lie. Bullshit. Died. I'll comment after. I was very early, very, very early. And we just saw you saw Brett Baer making a statement. They had a debate well into February. And not even mentioned, it wasn't even mentioned, the Democrats. The we were very early. Oh, I'm, I'm the president. And, and you know what I just did? So and you know what I just... And by the way, when you issue the ban, the virus was... He can't here. handle the press. Okay, and you know how many people, when I issued the ban, how many cases of virus were in the United States when I issued the ban? Do you know the number? There was... No, no, how many cases... Remember I said one person. How many cases were here when I issued the ban? Tell did me. you know? No, no, no. Do you have to do your research? How many? I did my research. On the 23rd of March, you said you knew this was going to be a pandemic. Can I tell you what? Well I did know it. I did know it. All I have to do is look. So you knew All, anybody knew it. Just, are you ready? How many cases were in the United States when I did my ban? How many people had died in the United States? So do you acknowledge that you didn't think Keep you your voice down, please. Spread? Keep your voice down. Did you not? How many, Keep your how voice many, down. How many cases were in the United States? I did a ban where I'm closing up the entire country. Jesus, how many people died? Nasty how many people shit. died in the United States? And yet I closed up the country. Oh, sure and you did. I believe there were no deaths. I'm going to comment Zero about this closing. At the time so. I closed up the country, nobody was there. And you should say thank you very much for good judgment. Holy this is shit. CBS's Weijia Jiang calling out Trump for attacking China for doing the exact same thing that Trump himself was doing. Exactly. His whole beef with China was that they didn't warn people earlier of the impacts, and yet he spent months downplaying the outbreak for the express purpose of insulating the economy. He exactly. disregarded Let me just pause this for a second, and I'll continue. So... So anyway, he says, I'm sorry about that. That was commercial. You know what? I, I, I actually inadvertently hit that. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. The lighting is horrendous. I mean, my, my uh, little lamp fell. Okay, so I hope this isn't too annoying, by the way. Maybe tomorrow, the next day, I'll be outside and... You won't have to deal with this. So anyway, so I'm going to be playing a little bit more of what Brian Tyler Cohen has to say. So Trump is talking about how the Chinese downplayed this whole thing. And wait and see. We all know what happened here. It's a Democratic hoax. It's a Democratic hoax. Here we go. Ready? Uh, 
own administration officials, warnings from public health officials and U.S. senators disregarded the steps being taken in countries around the world. And instead, he pretended that the virus was some political plot yep. to take him down, calling it a hoax yep. akin to impeachment or the Russia probe. He said that it was totally under control, that it was no different than the flu, that it would disappear in the yep. warm weather, that our cases would soon be down to zero, that it was yep. contained, and for good measure, that we should absolutely buy into the stock market. And so instead of preparing this country, Trump down play the threat, thereby putting us in the most vulnerable position possible when the virus inevitably arrived. And look, none of this is to say that China is not at fault, because they are, without a doubt. That's but right. by that same logic, Trump's logic, so is he. That's exactly he what I just said. condemn China for downplaying the virus and absolve Donald Trump, who then proceeded to also downplay exactly. the virus. Now, Trump goes on to deflect Jiang's question about failing to warn the American people by instead bragging about his China ban, which she definitely pointed out wasn't quite the all-encompassing ban that yep. he's playing it up to be. Because in reality, restrictions were only imposed on foreign nationals who'd been in China the last 14 days, allowing a staggering 40,000 people to continue to travel yep. into the U.S. from China even after the so-called ban was imposed. And because, despite Trump's fear-mongering, it's not just the Chinese who can transfer the virus, but everyone, then of course those people were able to spread it. So when Trump touts this travel ban as if it was some brilliant cure-all, it wasn't. And tens of thousands of people still arrived in the United States, presumably including those who were infected. There's also the fact that Trump is constantly bragging that no one moved faster than him on placing travel restrictions on China, which is nice revisionist history, but the truth is that not only did Italy enact a China ban four days earlier than the United States, but theirs was a full ban while ours had restrictions. Trump then praises himself for enacting these China restrictions before anyone died, congratulating himself for his foresight. Only A, if he was that privy to the dangers of the virus, why wouldn't he take other steps, steps that would have been good, vastly listen. more consequential? Steps like endorsing social distancing and yep. advocating for states to impose stay-at-home orders and coordinating a nationwide testing system. But none of that happened. So while it's nice that Trump thinks he can take one half-baked step and then declare victory, that's not how this works. Right. I'm sorry, but you don't get to preside over the steepest curve in the world, the most cases in the world, and the most deaths in the world, point to a travel ban from China that let 40,000 people in from China anyway, and throw yourself a parade. Incredible. And finally, there's also the minor issue that it didn't work. Yep. We have the most cases and the most deaths on the face of the earth. So propping up this solution as if it did the trick when our situation is the worst on the planet yep. is absurd. It's like if the house burned down and the sprinkler company showed up and says, hey, look at that. The sprinkler went off. So this was a massive success. Yep. So it's great that the sprinkler went off, but the house still burned down. But the fact is that Trump will continue to tout this exactly. travel ban because that's the only move he took, exactly. however modest it ended up being. And because he failed at testing, failed to promote social distancing exactly. early, failed to support nationwide stay-at-home orders, failed exactly. to take every step that would have been necessary to contain the spread, he will lean 100% of his energy on this one arbitrary it's, measure. Exactly. That's, how, that's his MO. That didn't actually ban all okay, travel. Okay. And he will repeat this over and over exactly. and over to try and convince yeah. people that A... Okay, so that's his MO, the little travel ban that didn't work. I'm, seeing, I'm trying to get this light, sorry about that. That didn't uh, didn't work uh, anyway. Let me just do this. Um, and listen, he, he, this it's abominable, all right? He could not, a, a person could not have handled it any worse. That's just the bottom line. It's just horrible. And just another example. By the way, I think there are how many 41,000 deaths? You know, 41,000 families who know a, a loved one who, uh, who has succumbed to this, to this virus. And how many times do you hear Trump say, oh, condolences for the family? Not once. He doesn't, doesn't talk about that. He just talks about how great he is. And, and, the, and the travel ban, travel ban. All right. Again, sorry for the poor lighting here. Hey, oh, that one's, that's actually not too bad. Okay. And tomorrow I'll be outside. So good friends, good books, and a sleepy conscience. Peace, love, and understanding here on Tabor Talk.